Trauma Therapist Podcast, episode 473. All right, guys, welcome to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. My name is Guy McPherson. My mission is to raise awareness of trauma and to support new trauma therapists just starting out on their trauma informed journey. I do that through this podcast and my membership community, Trauma Therapist 2.0. If you're a therapist of any kind interested in learning about trauma and you're looking for support and inspiration, I invite you to check out Trauma Therapist 2.0 by going to traumatherapist2.com. That's traumatherapist, the number two, dot com. All right, let's get started. This episode is sponsored by cptsdfoundation.org. And one of the great things about, uh, for me about doing this podcast is that I get to speak to and work with amazing people. And Athena Moberg, the CEO and founder of cptsdfoundation.org, is one of those individuals. This woman is on fire. I got to meet her several months ago here in San Francisco. We had breakfast together and just had a really great talk. And I got to learn about her foundation and what they're doing. Uh, they provide complex trauma survivors and practitioners with compassionate support skills, and trauma-informed education. Athena works together with expert practitioners and treatment centers offering daily touch points to anyone currently in trauma therapy or who wants a safe place to come, feel heard and validated between therapy appointments. Some of the resources they offer are uh, daily recovery support, a healing book club, they have free support groups. Uh, they offer also offer this really cool thing where they can uh, send you texts just to encourage you and help you heal on your journey. So check them out at cptsdfoundation.org forward slash trauma therapist podcast. Once again, that's cptsdfoundation.org forward slash trauma therapist podcast. All right, folks, a giant thank you to my sponsor for making this podcast happen, Brighter Vision. You know, when you're in private practice, it can be tough just to find the time to review your marketing efforts let alone make improvements where they're needed. Whether you're a seasoned clinician whose current website needs to be revamped or a new therapist building a website for the first time, Brighter Vision is there to help. By first understanding your business and what makes it unique, Brighter Vision's team of developers then uses this information to create a custom website catered to your specific marketing goals. Better yet, all of their websites also include free, unlimited technical support so that you can continue to build your brand online with minimal time or effort. And the best news of all, Trauma Therapist Podcast listeners get your first month entirely free just for listening today. That's right. So head on over to brightervision.com forward slash guy. Once again, that's brightervision.com forward slash guy. All right, guys, welcome back to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. I am very excited to have as my guest today, Owen Marcus. Owen, welcome. I'm excited to be here. All right. So for more than 40 years, Owen has explored and developed programs that bring together mindfulness, somatic psychotherapy, and the science of emotional physiology. After healing challenges of his dyslexia and Asperger's syndrome, he realized his relationship skills were lacking. Identifying his resistance to working with men as his next challenge, he dove into creating his first men's group at his clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona in 1995. Unsatisfied with the status quo, Owen began expanding the model of men's groups, incorporating what he saw working in corporate trainings and in his clinic. Men embraced this new model. It's a model that's natural for men's ways of experiencing and expressing emotions. His group and this new model was the focus of the documentary About Men. His book, Grow Up, A Man's Guide to Masculine Emotional Intelligence, lays out how to complete the nine stages of emotional maturation for boys and men. As a director of education at Everyman, that's spelled E-V-R-Y-M-A-N, Owen, along with his co-founders, continues to develop effective ways to use emotions and physiology as tools to create fulfilling relationships and purposeful lives. All right. Awesome. All right. Before we get uh, going here, Owen, share with the listeners where you're from originally and uh, where you are currently, and then we'll get going. Uh, originally, I, I'm from the Northeast. I went to colleges in the Northeast, uh, moved out West uh, after college, uh, started out in Boulder, Colorado in the mid-70s, when, which is when I got involved in all this. Ended up in Scottsdale, Arizona, ended up uh, being a rolfer. 
which I still do uh, part-time and developed a holistic clinic in Scottsdale. And now I uh, live in Northern Idaho or Sandpoint, Idaho. Right now I'm in Northern California. Oh, cool. Where? Uh, Nevada City. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I'm in Oakland, California. I was just down there. All right. All right. So there's a lot to talk talk about here, but let's kind of start a little broad in a sense, and then we'll dial it in. How did you get into this field of of working with men? Uh, uh, yeah, period. Uh, I got into it uh, sort of accidentally. Um, as I mentioned, I was uh, ended up in Boulder, Colorado, uh, after college, and I was just traveling and w- wanting to work in a ski area. That was a uh, attorney that moved to uh, Boulder to learn how to be a rolfer, and he argued his case so well that I finally said, "All right, I'll try it." That was uh, I think in 1976. That really opened me up, literally, uh, physically and emotionally. But uh, being in Boulder, learned that close to a lot, not just rolfing, but uh, I was one of Ron Curse. Kurtz's first students. I was in his first professional training. Uh, be- also became friends with and started studying with Peter Levine at that time, uh, along with some other more progressive, innovative techniques, and then ended up moving down to uh, Scottsdale in 1980 to uh, really start a rolfing practice that became a clinic. For those of our uh, listeners who aren't familiar with rolfing, what's what's the uh, kind of nutshell definition of it? Uh, Dr. Rolf, uh, she, she was a biochemist and she realized that uh, when the soft tissue, or particularly the fascia, that connective tissue that holds us together, gets released and organized, uh, our bodies end up being looser, more fluid, straighter, more in alignment with gravity. Fascia is the organ of stress. So we hold our stress or emotional stress or trauma in the fascial system. And so when that fascial system gets released, a lot of this old stress and trauma gets released. And I, yeah, I lost literally 20 pounds when I got rolled, and I was never. Fat. You can imagine how tight and uptight I was before I did that, and it also trained me in my body how to relax, which in the mm. long run was probably the biggest thing I got out of my 10 sessions of rolling. Very cool. All right, so that got you into rolling, um, kind of freed you up, obviously, emotionally, physically. Let's kind of venture into how did things develop in terms of your interest in, in putting together men's groups? Um, well, after I worked on myself and worked on thousands of clients, I started to realize there was a gap in my emotional development that was around relationships. And I also realized that I had an aversion of working with men, not in a one-to-one basis, but like in a group basis where I had to be vulnerable. And I said, ah, what the hell? I'm going to, died then and you you, got, you and 900 million more men right, <laughs> have, right. That, have, have that fear but I, I you know yeah i had fear and one of the biggest things i first got was i realized i wasn't the only one so i remember the first meeting of the first group i was in which was in my clinic uh the first takeaway i had was i'm sitting in a group of 10 12 guys and virtually every guy was as screwed up uptight or scared as i was and i went and that really relaxed me, and that became a, a new quest of mine. And I was doing, back then, traditional men's groups, and I saw a lack in that. And, and I said, all right, I'm going to redesign the model of men's groups. And I started bringing in everything that I learned and was using in my practice to really deepen the work that we do as men. Okay. So let's go back a little bit. Talk a little bit more about your own personal uh, realization, self-awareness around your uncomfortability about being in a group and being vulnerable with men. I mean, obviously, I think a lot of us can, you know, surmise what that might be, but what specifically was it for you, Owen? Um, well, part of the background was not only with dyslexia, but with particularly the Asperger's, I was always sort of out of sync connecting with people. And that was always an edge. And my default was sort of to avoid it. Uh, I was more you know, reclusive when I was younger. I was more of an introvert. So being emotionally vulnerable was an edge for me. But I also realized if I was going to have a successful relationship with women, that I needed to develop that skill set. And 
I, maybe I wasn't as bad as some guys, but I certainly realized that my relationships were failing and I was the consistent variable and I needed to do something about that. And, and I really didn't know where to start. So what did you do? What did um, you start? I called up a friend of mine that, uh, in DC that I knew he'd been involved with men's groups. And I said, Jim, you tell me more about it. Give me a lead. He gave me a lead. I pursued it. Um, and then, yeah, I ended up starting my own group. Uh, and that helped, but it just wasn't fulfilling my need. It was a little too superficial. And so after a few groups, I realized, or meetings, I realized I wanted more. I ended up moving to Northern California for a year. I helped start the first uh, MKP group, which is a Mankind Project group in Sonoma and Napa County. And that really was a good group. And that inspired me to do more when I ended up moving to Northern Cal or Northern Idaho. And I realized that as I became more vulnerable and I learned these skills from a place of not being in my head, but being in my body or in my emotions and being in the present moment, I started developing skills that I never had and really never saw in my family. And, and I didn't know I was missing anything until I started developing these skills and started interacting with these men in a more vulnerable way. So, okay, you're saying a lot here that I, I, I really want to jump on here. So you're talking about these skills I want to get to. But first, what was it specifically in that initial group that you saw that was lacking? And what did what was it that you wanted to go and and create in a sense? Well, I think as guys, and God, you could probably relate to this, is that yeah, you know, our default is to is to create these mental models uh, that are more linear, you know, more geared towards understanding and fixing, and they work for a while. But at least for me, and I, I suspect for the other guys, it wasn't addressing the more subtle stuff for developing these emotional vulnerable communication and relationship skills. So it was like, this is what the problem is. This is how you do it. And so it was a rigid way, but I, now I've seen with other men, we outgrow that. And I needed something that was, as we say, you know, with every man that really takes the guy deeper into his own experience. And by going into my own experience, I started connecting literally with parts of myself I was disconnected from which in some cases was old trauma, certainly old stress, and just hanging out in those uncomfortable places until I could just accept them, release them, and really integrate them into myself. So when you're talking about you know, going into one's own, how did you put it, going into one's own what? My own, to go, go my deep, own experience. experience. Okay, what does that look like? What are we talking about? Is it a... Oh, it could be it could be everything from what we work with and often teach and with every man is somatic mindfulness, just slowing down, being aware of your body, out of that being aware of your emotions, being aware of how your body and emotions connected in the most subtlest ways. Uh, and then one of the things I created a few years ago is what I call the rock formula, R-O-C, which just gives guys like a simple formula on how to do that. So the R is to slow down and relax. The O is to open up and be vulnerable. And the C is to take those two, being slowed down and you know connected to your own vulnerability and maybe to someone else and reach out or risk reaching out for connection. And I was starting to do that. I, didn't, I hadn't connected all those dots, but that's what I was starting to do. And I was seeing other men that were being successful were doing that. And so for most of us guys, slowing down into the experience that you know i'm having in the moment was the key i um love uh you know being a part of groups i loved doing groups when i was uh you know working as a therapist and so forth because i loved the uh i loved working and creating a space of immediacy and vulnerability and when you're talking about getting a group of men together a lot of times what you're talking about here is in direct opposition <laughs> to the way we grow up as men. You know, um, how do you, uh, how do you, 
project this to men? How do you pitch this to men? Who's coming to you? Um, what kind of men are coming to you? What kind of guys? Well, why are they coming? All good questions. And you know what I've, I'd say, Sarah, you said, you know, I've been doing this for a good 25 years. So it was a slow thing. But in the last few years, it's like a learning curve. It's just exploded. And I think one reason is the younger men are more open than any other men. And, and you know this, you know, as a therapist, younger men statistically are just more open to therapy. So I think that's part of it. The, the zeitgeist has shifted. Uh, what we do with every man is different than other organizations do with men. And so we just talk to men as men. We don't, it's not a lot of woo-woo. It's not a lot of, you know, new age stuff. A lot of other, we just say, look, we're just like you. This is how it's at. This is what we struggle with. And we've developed a way to, or a lexicon of talking to these guys that they can understand and relate to. And our initial trainings and our groups are really experiential. So the guy like will come to one of my groups or, or any of the everyman groups. And, you know, he's welcome. He sits there and we say, look, you got a simple set of protocols, like confidentiality, pretty obvious things. And you can just be a voyeur. You could just sit and watch and you can start to participate if you want. And these guys start to witness other men being vulnerable, which for a lot of guys, and it certainly was for me in the beginning, a, a new concept, a new experience. Right. And then, as you know, guys are also competitive. And so what starts to happen is it's like, the hell if Joe could be vulnerable, <laughs> hell, I could outdo him. <laughs> Right. And that's often what happens. You know, we'll do a training with 50, 60 guys, all different kinds, all different ages, uh, some pretty, you might say, rigid. But by the end of the first day, they're all having emotional releases and no one's pushing them. They're pushing themselves in part because we know how to create an emotionally safe space, which is the prerequisite for all of this. Right. So why are these guys contacting you in the first place? Are they contacting you because they want to become, quote unquote, better or more self-aware? Are they contacting you because they want to learn, you know, just like you said, they want to create better relationships? Are they contacting you because something's wrong and they don't know what it is? And, you know, and it may be all of these things, but I think it's all those things. And I think probably the biggest catalyst is relationships sort of like me i mean mm. maybe they got divorced and they don't want to do that again and they realize that they're the consistent variable maybe they're struggling in a relationship maybe they're you know trying to create a successful relationship that's the biggest thing um sometimes it's work issues we've had a whole cadre of guys that a lot a lot of tech guys have started very successful companies and great it's like okay what's next you know, all right, I did that, you know, yeah, maybe I burnt myself out, but I want to do something else, but I don't want, I want to do it in a different way. This and whole then idea, it's a whole thing of brotherhood. Yeah. Okay. So th this whole idea of, you know, vulnerability, I think for me is, is a, a, a word that, you know, we use a lot, but it mean it, it has a whole list of, of mean, it's a supercharged word. How are you finding that? And maybe you're not even using that word in, in your work, but how are you working with that, that aspect, that element of vulnerability? How is, how is that uh, being translated in, in your work? Well, yeah, I think you're right on about that because a lot of guys initially, and I certainly would have been one of them, that if you said, you you know, you need to be vulnerable, I would have gone, I don't think so. Uh, but we we sort of translate that for guys. And it's about being authentic. Uh, and it's about being powerful. And it's about you know, developing connection on a deeper level. So once we sort of hook them in, in the sense of, yeah, I think I want that, or oh, yeah, yeah, that's missing in my life or I'm starting to feel it, they often start to realize on their own without us telling them that, oh, the secret ingredient is vulnerability. And then at that point, I'll often say something like, yeah, vulnerability is the conduit to, for connection. And mm -hmm. so as you develop that muscle, you deepen your connections with people. Now, do you have... Um, different courses or programs that people can say, okay, I want to work, do this course on relationship, or I want to do this course on 
uh, creativity, for example, or are you selling, creating one course and that people come to one program that people come to? Uh, right now we have one online course, which is the fundamentals, which is a six week program, which is really the fundamentals of what we do. Uh, we just finished two days ago, a uh, uh, whole course series of, you know, six weeks of that. And, you know, it's, it, it works beyond what I would expect, but we started out and continued to do uh, live events. So we have our first introductory program, which is called the open source, which uh, is more experiential. And it's a third large group, a third small group, because the core of our ethos and work is small groups. Okay. You're usually outside doing activities. And then we go into what we call the melt training, which is men's emotional leadership training where we start to train men, and it could be you know, men in our, our ecosystem, uh, therapists, on our technology, our you know, human technology of connection. And that's where we start training them. And then we have a, uh, a six-month certification training where we really dive in to the deeper parts of this technology. And then we have other experiences beyond. You know, you talked about... Um you know, quote unquote, younger men coming to you who are maybe a little bit more open. And are you talking, what kind of, what age, what age are you referring to when you say that? Uh, I would probably say 30 to 40. We do get, but I think most 20 year olds, and I was one of them, are often more focused on adventure, which is fine. But often at their late 20s, by mid 30s, these guys are going, Okay, I, I want to get serious about my relationships, about my, my and you know my peer group, which which has been my sort of go to source up to now, is really at where I'm at. So I think I need to sort of jump beyond my just my peer group and get assistance from other men in this case that you know maybe know a little more than I know, and so that's the sweet spot. But we also get guys all the way into the 80s. And, and I think that the next like sweet spot would be men probably in their 50s. Uh, they are sort of at the back end of their professional development and they've, they've become successful. And now they, you know, it's like, you know, I made my money, I made my success. Now I have the space to connect with, with my family. And then they realize that they've been sort of ways. And one way is their ability to connect. And so they want to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. And what type of challenges are you seeing in, uh, in that work with the men who come? And I I realize this is a general question and everyone's different, but, um, you know, are, are you seeing that you have to, you know, you talked about you, sometimes it takes one person to be vulnerable and then men start getting competitive and they start, you know, being willing to be vulnerable themselves, but is, is there a challenge in um, presenting, you know, connection as valuable or what is, I'm interested in the, the challenges that you face in doing this work with these guys. Um, I think, you know, the basic challenge is a challenge that any therapist would have. It's just, just you know, uh, beyond that, it's, you cut up there, Owen. What? Yeah, I, I, yeah. Our internet seems to be sort of iffy right now. Um, have, it's the same challenge that you know a therapist would have with getting a guy just to show up. Once they show up, it's getting them to open up. And I think one of our secrets is that you know, in therapy, therapy with you. Guy, I'm sitting there, you know, like I'm expected to perform. Where in our groups and our events, you can sort of be passive in the beginning and observe, see how safe it is, see how other guys jump in. And there's always someone that will jump in, and right. then you can go in at your own pace. And so we get guys that, you know, literally say at the end, you know, I sat in that seat because because it was the closest to the door, and I knew. For the first you know day that, that at any moment I might just get up and leave, and, and you now this is why I didn't. And you know, and basically, you know, because he took some risk and showed up, he had these huge changes. 
So mm-hmm. guys get to go at their own pace. What What is it that our society is doing to men such that they need to come to you? You know, what? what is going on? What's been going on? Uh, I, you know, I think it's a lot of things, but one thing I realized a few years ago is that at least since an industrial revolution, and you know, our fathers, our uncles, you know, the whole man tribe has been away at work. So women stepped up and raised us. And so individually and culturally, we sort of defaulted to a more feminine emotional model, which is not bad. But what I started seeing was there's a certain part or percentage that's missing. And, and that missing part, we, we need, you know, we get from other men. And what happens is you put guys together and even, you know, untrained, inexperienced guys together, and they just start sitting together and become authentic. It's like this instinctual part in us starts to get woken up and we start teaching each other about connection, about vulnerability, about taking risks, uh, about basically how to experience and express emotions in, in a more masculine way. And, and the bonus to that is inevitably our partners, male or female, are blown away with what we're learning and mm-hmm. not so much learning here, but embodying and their relationship skills. And like in our groups, we'll say about the average in six months after, you know, once a week in our groups, these guys' relationships almost inevitably turn around like 180 degrees because mm-hmm. they've changed. And, and, and at some point, a lot of these guys are sort of laughing and saying, you know, you're telling me what my wife has been telling me for 20 years, <laughs> but I can listen to you. But more than that, he can understand it when a guy says it and he sees how guys do it because how we are vulnerable as men, generally speaking, is different than how we're vulnerable and then women are vulnerable. And that's one reason guys resist being vulnerable because we think we have to do it like women do it, which again, mm. it's not bad. And some of it is the same, but we resist. And, and uh, you know, us, they're huge as fans and, advocates and it's come to one of our trainings and in in one of the things that she says who was that Esther Perel okay Esther um and you know she says that you know women really need to learn how to listen to men because often we're communicating what they want but we're just doing for sure a lot of it falls on our shoulders but as men slow down, get more connected to their own experience, they start being able to connect to their partners and start hearing them and start communicating in a way where their partner is going to, you know, rather than drifting apart, they start coming together. You know, as you're talking, Owen, I'm thinking to myself um, uh, about trauma. And my, my guess is that obviously a lot of stuff comes up. Um, and men's relationship with trauma, more specifically with abuse or bullying or on and on and on, is, is uh, a, a very delicate relationship in the sense that a lot, you know, from, from my personal experience, I was bullied as a young kid and that, that whole experience jacked me up. And jacked my the trajectory of my relationships and self-esteem and on and on and on. How do you uh, deal with that topic in the work you do? And again, I realize these are general questions, but let's try to chip away at it if we could. Yeah, uh, yeah, I love the question. Um, the background is particularly, I you know, is Peter Levine. I have to give him a lot of credit you know, studying what later became his somatic experience uh, approach, but really teach teaching me stress and trauma, but how to unpack it or unwind it. And that be- became something I wove into everything I did. So for men, what that means is that we work with our bodies. 
and it's it's sort of like going as Ron Kurtz would would say, going in under the radar. Um, and and men men are a lot lot more than their emotions initially. And some guys, you know this, you know, you you ask the guy, what do you feel? You know, either they resist or roll their eyes. But if you ask them, you know, what they're feeling in their body, I've never met a guy that would resist talking about that. They might not really know, but you guide them and they start to experience that. And we just take that a little further. And and I've asked some simple questions to men. Within 30 seconds, they're starting to experience the physiology of the trauma that they never got to experience. Mm. And so what we do is we support that physiology to release or complete. You know, and as you know, you know, what happens so often with PTSD, it's that frozen state to make it simple. So we let them feel the sort of repressed fight or flight, the, you know, that sympathetic nervous system feeling its urge and sometimes acting out in that urge. So most of that, at least initially, is the body starting to have some intrinsic, maybe extrinsic movement, and then keying them into the emotion. So we don't directly market ourselves in any way, you know, and it's trauma therapy, but inevitably we get a lot of guys with some severe trauma. And we've worked with a lot of vets, uh, particularly a lot of ex uh, special operators. Uh, we, you know, I've had several in my groups, uh, and it's literally been life changing for these wow. men when they get to connect to their body, unwind the physical part of their trauma, and then unwinding the emotional affect or part becomes a lot easier. And then having the support of the the, the group, be it like an event or particularly their ongoing group, is huge. You know because they get to you know downregulate everything because unlike when the trauma happened and, and having the full experience not being safe in our environments, having the full experience is not only safe, but it is honored, mm -hmm. which really sort of screws over our head because we, we often, as you know, sort of shame ourselves for what happened to us. But when we can experience it and be witnessed by these other men and be honored for it, that's huge. And so we've had guys that were suicidal that just from going through this, you know, you know a few months later, they were doing great. Right. Just remind everyone as we kind of wind down here that I'm speaking with Owen Marcus. Uh, he's the uh, director of education at Everyman. That's E V R Y M A N. So, who is your ideal audience? Who do you, who do you guys who do you want to come to your groups? Who needs to come to your groups? Uh, well, I, in some ways, women are too. I mean, we get we get women that watch or listen to our podcasts and, and send us men to our groups and events. Um, but in terms of the men, you know, I think it's any man that is willing to take a risk, you know, that maybe you know, an old equation I've always had is, again, I was one of them. It's like, as, as my fear increases, so does my pain. So it's, it's like how much pain will I endure before I take a risk to do something out of the box? And maybe it's therapy or maybe it's coming to one or, or events. For a lot of guys, they're in a certain amount of pain that's too much for them and they're willing to take the risk. Now, as you sort of just alluded to, is we make it as safe and as easy as men for men as possible. And our probably our biggest source of men are other men that have done our trainings or done our groups. So, most of our men come from personal referral because, mm -hmm. you know, they have a guy and they see from him that not only is it safe, but it works. All right. All right. Um, in terms of, you mentioned your experiential trainings, are these uh, one day, three day, five day? Talk a little bit more about those. Uh, they're generally weekends. We start f Friday night and go to Thursday, or excuse me, Sunday until four. Um, we do them generally on the East Coast and the West Coast. Um, and we also have a, an expedition that we do, usually like into a park like Yellowstone for like a week, which is a physical thing, a nature thing, but it's also like a, a long going group. And then 
we also do what these these smaller trainings, which are group intensives, what I've been doing for years, where like I'll go to a community that either wants to start a men's group or has one, they want to up level. So it'll be like 12 guys in this training, and we just really dive in and do a lot of this deeper work, which for some guys is trauma work. Mm-hmm. Wow. Love it. Love it. Excited. Um, all right, Owen. Let's um, kind of wind down here. What's the best way for people to get in contact with you? Uh, the best way is through Everyman, and it's E-V-R-Y-M-A-N.com. Uh, and my email is Owen at Everyman if someone wants to contact me. Uh, okay. But, yeah. you, also, you also have a podcast. Yeah. Uh, one of my partners, Dan Doty, runs a podcast, uh, but they can find that on the website. Okay. Awesome. Well, very exciting. Um, I'm going to be checking out your website, looking at some experiential stuff. Um, this stuff really, really gets me going here. And I'm really glad you came on here. I love what you're doing and uh, really find it inspiring. So thank you so much for, for coming on here. Thank you, Guy. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. All right. Take care. Goodbye. All right, folks. A giant thank you to my sponsor for making this podcast happen, Brighter Vision. You know, when you're in private practice, it can be tough just to find the time to review your marketing efforts let alone make improvements where they're needed. Whether you're a seasoned clinician whose current website needs to be revamped or a new therapist building a website for the first time, Brighter Vision is there to help. By first understanding your business and what makes it unique, Brighter Vision's team of developers then uses this information to create a custom website catered to your specific marketing goals. Better yet, all of their websites also include free, unlimited technical support so that you can continue to build your brand online with minimal time or effort. And the best news of all, Trauma Therapist Podcast listeners get your first month entirely free just for listening today. That's right. So head on over to brightervision.com forward slash guy. Once again, that's brightervision.com forward slash guy. This episode is sponsored by cptsdfoundation.org. And one of the great things about, uh, for me about doing this podcast is that I get to speak to and work with amazing people. And Athena Moberg, the CEO and founder of cptsdfoundation.org, is one of those individuals. This woman is on fire. I got to meet her several months ago here in San Francisco. We had breakfast together and just had a really great talk. And I got to learn about her foundation, and what they're doing. Uh, They provide complex trauma survivors and practitioners with compassionate support, skills, and trauma-informed education. Athena works together with expert practitioners and treatment centers offering daily touch points to anyone currently in trauma therapy or who wants a safe place to come, feel heard and validated between therapy appointments. Some of the resources they offer are uh, daily recovery support, a healing book club. They have free support groups. Uh, they offer also offer this really cool thing where they can uh, send you texts just to encourage you and help you heal on your journey. So check them out at cptsdfoundation.org forward slash trauma therapist podcast. Once again, that's cptsdfoundation.org forward slash trauma therapist podcast.